Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, June 5th, 2014. Here's a quick look what's coming up. Tonight, InfoWars in-depth coverage of Sergeant Bergdahl. Did the Obama administration do the right thing with his negotiation? Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs and Darren McBreen report. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Why are his comrades saying that he was more of a deserter than this Taliban victim? Why does his dad get all choked up when he talks about the Afghan people? I mean, that just sounds like a psyop to me. Well, tonight there is increasing evidence that the Obama administration may have traded five terrorist ringleaders for what many are now calling a traitor. Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl, who was captured five years ago by the Al-Qaeda-linked Taliban in Afghanistan, well, he not only deserted his post in hostile territory, but he also left a note announcing that he was disgusted with the American mission in Afghanistan and he wanted to renounce his citizenship to the United States. The New York Times reported that Bergdahl took a backpack, some bottled water, a couple of knives, and a notebook it basically went AWOL. He didn't take any weapons with him. He simply walked off into the sunset in Afghanistan near the Pakistan border and disappeared. And well, as you know, he ultimately got captured by the Taliban, leaving behind his comrades who were undoubtedly concerned about what the hell was going on. And in fact, they spent the next 90 days searching for him and many of them lost their lives in the process. Now look, if Bergdahl was a conscientious objector and no longer wanted to participate in the Afghan war, I get it, I understand, and I'd be sympathetic towards his cause. However, the fact that he deserted his unit put the men he left behind at serious risk, and many brave soldiers lost their lives trying to save him, and that is inexcusable. Furthermore, we are now learning that Bo Bergdahl may have actually deserted the base in Afghanistan in an effort to contact the Taliban army himself. So maybe he wasn't captured at all. CNN is reporting that intercepted radio chatter has indicated that Bergdahl sought contact with the Taliban. And there are dramatic allegations by people close to Bergdahl including his team leader in Afghanistan and U.S. intelligence officials who say that Bergdahl may have actively collaborated with the enemy. He was looking for someone who spoke English so he could talk to the Taliban. And when we heard that, it told us, okay, he's actively seeking out the Taliban. So over the next couple months, uh, all the attacks definitely were far more directed. Following his disappearance, ID started going off directly under the trucks. They're getting perfect hits every time. Their ambushes were very calculated, very methodical, like they knew what we were gonna do. And with us now is Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs to try to help us make sense of all this. Hey, what do you think of the allegations that Bo Bergdahl may have collaborated with the Taliban? Well, I say that's a pretty safe allegation at this point, Darren. I mean, based off the information we got from the Afghan war uh, files from WikiLeaks.org, and also just the, uh, the, the accounts of Bergdahl's platoon at that time. They all collaborated. It all says the exact same thing that is in the paperwork. So at this point in time, it's not looking too good for Bo. You know, some people are going to say that he was captured and then he was tortured. And, and perhaps that's why that um, a lot of his, uh, the guys in his unit were getting close to direct fire from the Taliban, that sort of thing. But it doesn't really make sense because uh, we know that he left notes behind before he disappeared saying that he planned to desert, that he was going to renounce his citizenship. And we also have U.S. intelligence officials who picked up chatter that he was out there actively looking for the Taliban. So he's out there trying to contact them. And what are your thoughts on that? You know, he, he struggled for a long time with, with his religion from what I heard about. So I, I, don't, I don't think that that's a, you know, a far-fetched idea. You know, the fact that he left that and walked off base shows, you know, pretty good intent that that's what he meant to do. I mean, he left his weapon behind. I mean, that shows he didn't want to be a threat at all to when he went outside the gate. He wanted to show that he only had a compass and some water. And he had camera. no weapons with yeah, him. Yeah, no weapon, anything like that. He just wanted to show 
that he was out there and he wanted to talk to him and he wanted to find some kind of way to communicate with him. Well, he ran uh, up against some some pretty bad guys. Tell us more about the Haqqani network. These are the guys that supposedly captured him. I heard you on the radio. You called them the Sopranos of Afghanistan. What, what's up with these guys? They're, they're a bad, nasty group. I remember when I was in Afghanistan myself, right around the time that Bo got captured, a lot of these asymmetric warfare guys would come in and they were always showing these, you know, these files about the Haqqani network. And they're like, you know what? You know, we would always be asking, like, oh, have you guys ever heard anything about where Osama bin Laden is? And they're like, Osama, don't even worry about that guy. It's the Haqqani network. These are the guys out here actively seeking to destroy America. You know, these are bad guys. And the reason called them Sopranos of the Taliban is because they have legitimate businesses in Afghanistan as well as their main source of income is capturing people, kidnapping them, and then trading them off for a ransom. Now, what about Obama's decision to release five top Taliban commanders in exchange for Bergdahl? I mean, you yourself, you served in Iraq and Afghanistan. Doesn't this put our troops at serious risk? Well, I just want to look at the camera real quick. I want everyone to know right now, this is a very, very serious deal. You know, once you put the price on an American soldier's head like you did with Bo Bergdahl, you've now put a price on every Mer an American's head across the whole world. I mean, everyone is at risk now. Who travels because of this? It, it, it's, it's crazy. I don't know what goes through his mind sometimes, but it, it, it's, it's just not safe for people. It's a dangerous thing to happen. It was a horrible trade. It wasn't worth it. It was poorly thought out. I just, I, I don't know what, this, what he's doing. Now, obviously, you stay in touch with a lot of guys you served with. I'm curious what the climate is like amongst veterans. I mean, this story has to have everybody pretty angry right now. Well, I know a lot of the veterans are pissed off. I'm on uh, one of the Facebook pages that was created by a lot of Bo's uh, platoon at the time. All right. And the chatter amongst all of them are that they are starting to get gag orders. They're, they're, they're saying that people from their unit are coming down and saying, hey, you've got to stop talking about this. Even the ones who are out. Now, I understand if you're still in. I was just going to say, yeah, these, these are the guys that are veterans. They're out right now, and they're still getting threatened. Yeah, they're still getting threatened that they could lose VA benefits and things like that. Wow. You know, I, it's it, it just shows you what the government's going, you know, what they're trying to do to cover this up. And, and when that starts happening, you know, there's nothing good behind it. You know that there's something being covered up with that, or they wouldn't be doing that. Well, what are some of the comments that they're afraid of, of you know, people putting on Facebook? Well, you know, one of the things I've noticed, too, is, you know, the veterans are, you know, they're mad. So what does that do? That sparks up that anger amongst everyone. And it almost seems like it's a, you know, Obama's kind of plot to so, get so that's the That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it almost sounds like a deliberate, that this that's yeah. what this whole thing could be. Because, to be honest, this whole... Bergdahl fiasco is confusing to me. I don't understand. It seems like a bad move by the Obama administration. It can only hurt him as far as ratings well, government, and, and yeah. public opinion in the whole The government thing. has this war on returning veterans, and this is a perfect example to be like, see here, that's right. I told you these guys are mad. You yeah. know, they're, they're, they're pissed off, you know, and that's a way to play into that hand. You know, and I was just trying to remind them, hey, stay calm and remember, think about things before you say it because these guys are watching everything and they're trying to use it against them. And they're only trying to get the truth out about what they saw. And it's further proof that the veterans are under a microscope right now, and obviously on Facebook as well, that they're watching everything they put on Facebook. Everyone involved in this entire scandal, fiasco, whatever you want to call it, is going to be under a microscope for quite some time. Meanwhile, the Taliban's diminished leadership has now been replenished no thanks to Barack Hussein Obama. Joe Biggs, thank you for giving us your take on all this. Thank you. Now, the White House talking point throughout this entire Bergdahl ordeal has uniformly been no soldier left behind. National Security Advisor Susan Rice, she said the United States doesn't leave a man or woman on the battlefield. What we did was ensure that, as always, the United States doesn't leave a man or a woman on the battlefield. Right. And, and, and in order to do this, right. it's very important for folks to understand, if we got into a situation where we said, you know, because of who has captured an American soldier on the battlefield, we will leave that person behind, we would be in a whole new era for uh, the safety of our personnel and for the nature of our commitment to our men and women in uniform.
So on the left, we have Obama's cheerleaders who are saying that no soldier should be left behind. And uh, apparently that justifies the release of the top five Taliban commanders who will undoubtedly rejoin the fight in Afghanistan against our soldiers. Meanwhile, on the right, their battle cry has always been the United States does not negotiate with terrorists. Oh, really? Really? Come on, man. The truth is that not only does the United States negotiate with terrorists, but our government, spearheaded by the CIA and the military industrial complex, created most of the world's terrorist organizations to begin with. Case in point, the Taliban and Al Qaeda, for example, Al Qaeda. Well, they were created by the CIA and the Pakistani ISI intelligence networks. I mean, our government created these Frankenstein's. Don't forget that. And the official story has always been that Osama bin Laden and the Al Qaeda network went rogue and they turned against us. Give me a break. We know for a fact, and it's on record, that collaborative efforts between the CIA and the Pakistani ISI, that resulted in the creation of the Taliban and Al Qaeda. The Afghan Mujahideen leader, Malawi Haqqani, well, he was a direct CIA asset who also worked closely with bin Laden, the boogeyman himself. And as we've reported heavily here at InfoWars, the United States continues to utilize the Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusra terrorist networks in places like Libya and Syria. So we've been negotiating with terrorists for a very long time. They come in real handy for false flag terror attacks or toppling uncooperative governments in other countries, allowing the globalists to install their very own hand-picked dictators. And back to the Bo Bergdahl trade for the Gitmo 5 Taliban. You know, a lot of people are saying that this is a deliberate attempt by the Obama administration as a kind of a sideshow to divert our attention away from the recent VA scandal. And that might be true or could be that Obama's a, a total f up. And every decision he makes is a total disaster. And if the Bergdahl scandal was meant to divert our attention away from the VA scandal, I hate to see what kind of wag the dog scenario they come up with to distract us from Bergdahl. That ought to be interesting. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Never a dull moment here at InfoWars. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. The InfoWars Nightly News will return right after this. So stick around. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. This is Alex Jones for InfoWarsLife.com. The latest in preparedness is now here. An electrically stabilized colloidal silver solution that can be added to both your home cabinet and preparedness pack alike. Concentrated to 30 parts per million in what has been dubbed the Survival Silver Solution. And it's entirely free of toxic artificial additives that are loaded into many products. Purchase your bottle of InfoWarsLife.com Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver today. And find other amazing supplements at InfoWarsLife.com.